Hello Sagittarius! Welcome to your weekly reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is for the week of April 23rd through 29th. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. We're quickly approaching 50,000 subscribers. I couldn't be more thankful and frankly a little overwhelmed by the the growth of the channel, but I really do appreciate everyone who stops by to watch these videos. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. Okay, I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to go beyond the details that I provide. Okay. Remember that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And look at that, we've got a three of wands. Very strong, committed fire energy, right? I think really great ambition. Oh, and a two of wands, too. That's not bad at all. Uh, let's go ahead and do our dove and serpent spread. And I also want to say that if there is anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments, okay? I, I try to read every comment. I try to respond to every request for... Uh, for prayers, for positive energy, for good vibes, or um, if there's anything that I can do energetically um, for any of you, please let me know. So we've got our Dove and Serpent spread out here. Now we're going to do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. I'm just going to mix these up a little bit. And this is the card that we are going to set aside. We're not going to look at it until the end of the reading. Okay. So We've got to stick around to see how that might tie everything together and or give us the confirmation that we're looking for, okay? <clears throat> so, we've got uh, a little bit of Major Arcana. I like the way the Majors are going here right away. I think that's wonderful, going from Moon to Star, okay? We also have some Air. We have some Fire, Earth, Water, Fire, Earth, and then that Major. So, a pretty nice balance of cards, I think. You know, I don't think there's anything that's too out of balance, okay? And that's really a good way to start a reading is to have everything to be in balance. All of the elements are in balance. And then we also have those spiritual forces because the major arcana, those are like the spiritual forces, right? Those are like something that is um, kind of energies that are affecting you in a really deep way, a really spiritual way, almost a karmic way, uh, something that really does uh, affect your life and the course of your life. So to have a moon and a star right here, that's those are some really good energies. We start with the three of wands though. And this is telling me that you are a very, I think what most people would call a very noble person. You know, I think that you have a very well-established uh, moral code, right? You have a very well-defined set of principles and standards. Um, I think that you've been through a lot of things in your life where you've had to really learn, you know, you've had to really, um, really mature. And I think you've established a very strong character. You know what I mean? Like an uprightness, um, a very, a very high level of integrity. Okay. And this is telling me that when you make a promise, you don't break your promise, right? When you commit to something, you don't abandon that commitment, right? Um, it, it's almost a situation or a, a vibe that I'm getting where you will stay committed to something even when reason or intuition will suggest that maybe it's time to move on right? You, um, you will keep trying at something because you've promised, because you've committed to it, because you have that character and that integrity. You're not a quitter. You don't give up. You'll keep trying and trying, even if it is like your head against a brick wall, okay? Metaphorically speaking, please. But I feel that really says a lot about you, you know? I think you're very strong, and I think that the strength that you have, the, the physical power, right? I think that you are a physically strong person. But I think that your, maybe your, your emotional strength or this strength of character, your 
your soul, your, the fortitude of your soul is really what people notice about you first. You know, um, you have this presence about you. I'm really feeling like a, a majesty, even just kind of talking to you today. Um, I, I feel like you have earned this though. I don't feel like you're putting on airs. I don't feel like it's just arrogance. I feel like you've earned this kind of um, stature in your life, okay? I think you've overcome a lot. I think that you have um, almost fortified yourself in the fire. You know what I mean? And that brings me to this Two of Wands here. Now, Two of Wands is kind of like the, uh, the scepters, the wands, the... Um, the hardened steel that is forged or tempered in the furnace, in the fire, okay? So it's through struggle and adversity. It is through challenges. It is through keeping your word and keeping your promise even when it's not easy, right? I think that is the measure of integrity. Are you able to keep your promises and keep your word even when the situation is very difficult or the situation makes it difficult to do so. Okay. So I think that you're meeting with some sort of challenge this week, but this is one of those challenges that you're looking forward to because you then have another chance to, um, to be majestic, right? To be powerful, to be in control and in command of yourself and of your, your destiny, of your life path, your trajectory. It feels to me like a business thing, like a work thing, something with employment or career. Um, I think that, I, I don't feel like you're in a leadership role right now, but I feel like you are definitely leadership material, okay? So I feel that there is there's been a lack of recognition, I think, of your abilities in this context, right? I said before that the first thing people notice about you is your, your fortitude of soul, your strength of character. But in this situation, it feels like you're due a lot of congratulations, a lot of respect, a lot of recognition that has kind of been a long time coming, okay? And I think that this is what I mean about you staying committed to something, putting in 150% into a situation, even though it's like you're banging your head against the wall, okay? So I think a lot of people, probably myself included, uh, putting in this much effort and having not received the, the recognition, the acknowledgement, the appreciation, um, probably would eventually go a different way, right? If this work that I'm doing, if this effort I'm putting in is not meaningful to you in any way, well, then I'm going to go leave. I'm going to take that somewhere else. I don't think that's your vibe, though. I think you're looking at this as uh, as a challenge, as the universe kind of seeing if you can make muster, right? Seeing if you can give it that little extra push, that extra, extra, extra push when most people would quit, okay? So there's also this really interesting feeling of, of discipline with you, you know? But I don't think it's a discipline of... Um, rigid structure and organization and that sort of thing. I feel like it's an energetic discipline that I think it's because you enjoy this feeling so much. You enjoy this feeling of being, like I said, majestic and powerful and being strong and upright and having your integrity and putting it to the test. I think you enjoy the, not the adrenaline, but you enjoy the uh, endorphins of that, right? And I think this week there is that challenge for you to do that little bit extra that is going to, I think it's going to break us through this wall 
we're at this brick wall, right? I think we're getting through that. Now, what we see in the recent past, let's go here with a six of discs. The recent past is, I think, you really organizing something. I think you have either, you've completed a project, you've put together a team, you've succeeded in building something through this really wonderful fire energy that we have, that's central. This fire energy is right here at your core. This is at the center of it all, right? This fire energy. We see some leaking over here, but we'll get there. With the six of discs, I feel like you have either put together a team, you've uh, built a department in your company, or you have, you've assembled something into a working order, a rhythm, a harmony, and it's it's something now where you're sort of offering it to the company, but saying, look, I've, I've accomplished this for you. I've done this. I've put this together, right? So I don't know if this is a team of people that you've put together or if this is just a, a working system, if this is some department, some kind of proposal, some kind of plan, or, you know, something that you've assembled. And that is a visible, manifested uh, object that is representative of your character, your integrity, and your ability to continue to exceed expectations, continue to put your integrity and your character to the test right? You're proving yourself to yourself, not to anyone else. But what you've accomplished in the recent past, I think within the last six months, was something that is a, a physical representation of that character and that ambition. Okay. So again, I don't know if this is, you know, a product, a business that you put together, uh, a certain department, an assemblage of people, something like that. Something's been put together in this very harmonious way that is functioning as it should. It's not just a, a pretty structure. It's something that's functional. It's something that is bringing more success, more profit, more revenue into whatever this system is that we're talking about, right? And now we could be talking about a family dynamic, a family relationship. It feels to me like it's work or career or some sort of organization that you're involved with. Uh, even if you're in your post-career years, um, this is still talking about a, a, an organization that you're involved with, right? A group of people that you are, uh, that you're committed to, okay? So I'm using the, I'm using the analogy or the metaphor of this being a workplace situation, right? But it could equally apply to other areas of your life. Okay, so now we should go down to this moon card, I think, that's down beneath everything. This is the moon. This is a Pisces energy card. It's beneath the surface. Okay, so it's an unconscious impulse. It is a, uh, maybe a whisper, maybe just a gut feeling that you have. And this is kind of telling you that um, something's not right. You know, this is telling you that there is more to this situation than you're consciously aware of. Okay, this is the, this is your imagination that is kind of creeping up on you and saying, look, this is not what it seems. This is a little bit of that kind of unconscious paranoia, right? It's the kind of, it's the dream uh, landscape or, or the, the nightmare landscape that's saying this is the worst possible, the worst, worst possible reality, right? This is um, really the suspicion that things are not what they seem, the suspicion that this is the worst thing ever, that something very sinister is going on here, okay? But this is down beneath the surface, and I think this is really, this is what's testing your character. It's not this situation. It's not this lack of recognition. What's testing your character is your own unconscious saying, 
look, this is bad news. Something's not right here. We got to get out of here, right? So it's urging you. There's this temptation for you to abandon your commitment, abandon your, uh, your word, your promise, right? But the interesting thing about the moon card is that it always shows us that the, the clarity is coming. The sunlight is coming. It doesn't matter the darkest night that we could be in, the most sinister suspicions and paranoia that we could be in. The sun is always right beneath the horizon, just ready to come up. And this, I think, is, is what we are dealing with on an internal kind of energetic spiritual level is this doubt, this confusion, this suspicion. Uh, do we think other people are out to get us? Do we think there's some plot against us? And that's why we are unable to, um, to really make the advances that we're looking for, right? We're doing perfectly fine work, but it seems as if we're being ignored maybe a little bit. It's really, it could really go very deep. There's a lot going on in this moon energy that could really carry us away, right? We could start believing all sorts of things about this situation and why it is how it is and why we are, you know, this is almost the why card, right? Saying, why are you doing all of this work? Why aren't we getting the recognition? Why don't we have that kind of breakthrough success? Why aren't we advancing? Um, why do we keep doing this when we're not getting the reasonable rewards for it. But thankfully up above this moon card, directly counterbalancing it is this two of swords. So the two of swords is basically saying, look, don't make a hasty decision. Don't act impulsively. Don't, um, don't do anything, say anything that is going to cause you some regret later. We're still trying to get all the facts in. Let's not get carried away by these what ifs down here with this moon card, these what ifs, this confusion, this darkness, this cloud, this haze that we're in where we don't really see things clearly. No, we need to look for the objective points of view. Okay. We need to try to gather the facts of the situation, not facts that are filtered through our lunar energy because those are unreliable. Facts in general are unreliable because we have to filter them through our mind, right? Our personality. So they're by default, they're a little bit unreliable, even more so if we filter them through all of this lunar energy. So we have to try to get a relatively reasonable collection of data before we make any kinds of decisions. <clears throat> and really, I think that this is, this is a test of you overcoming this lunar energy. Okay, this, this lunar energy, this is the stuff of, of nightmares and, and daydreams and, you know, um, kind of uh, paranoid fantasies even. It could go very deep. So we need to keep a handle on things with the two swords here. And this is some real discernment. This is you using your intellect, your conscious mind, your reasonableness to discern, to really be able to tell yourself what is real and what is just this kind of lunar energy, right? These, these lunar waters. So this is something that is, it's right at the top of the path of the dove. This is what we're focused on, right? And I should point out that Mercury is currently retrograde. So this is even more important to utilize this two of swords and not make any kind of hasty decisions. Don't say anything that we're going to regret. Let's just suspend our judgment, suspend our decision making at least for a few more days. Okay. Uh, because, um, it is highly likely during this retrograde that anything you say is going to be misinterpreted. And it could very well be that our interpretation of this, what I think is a work situation, 
is being misinterpreted. Okay. And this is the unreliability of data coming in through our senses. Okay. Because, well, because our mercury is a little bit haywire right now. And with the retrograde mercury, there is going to be a lot of what mercury would consider just a fun, practical joke, but it really could disrupt our lives in a serious way. We're not going to think it's funny, but mercury will. So we have to be very careful what we say, who we say it to, what decisions we make, and definitely keep in mind, literally, keep in mind what thoughts, decisions, potential actions, urges, impulses we feel and if they are coming from this lunar energy, if they're coming from this, this underworld kind of vibe, right? Because this is a subtle, rather unconscious influence that's going to try to direct your thinking, direct your actions, your communication, your decision making. So we have to be aware of that. We have to watch where that is creeping in. Okay? And that's going to give you a lot of stuff to mull over while we wait for, you know, Mercury to, uh, to start acting right, you know. What I see in the future beyond this situation, on the horizontal plane, we've got this, the completion of this project that you think has kind of, you've, you've kind of earned a name for yourself, right, in theory. What's coming of that? Well, we've got perhaps a water sign person. This is the heir of water, the prince of cups. And this is a lot of the air energy that we're utilizing with the two of swords. And now it is being um, combined with the water energy. So we're starting to, we're starting to understand, first of all, the, the mental emotional component of these two, right? The kind of the unconscious emotional impulses of this lunar energy that are trying to influence our decision making. So we're understanding that, but also we're taking <clears throat> all of the understanding, all of the wisdom that we get from this two of swords. And now we're starting to feel something a little bit different about this situation, right? The feelings of confusion, deception, paranoia, suspicion, those feelings, that lunar energy now, we're starting to feel a different way about this situation. Those feelings are starting to be a little bit transmuted, a little bit sublimated even, right? They're going from negative emotions, suspicion, all that stuff. And now we're really starting to get some wisdom and understanding about this moon card, about this lunar energy. And we're trying to, trying to deal with it we're trying to sublimate it. We're trying to sort it out. We're trying to convert it directly into a positive emotion, into an inspiration, into this star card. Right? We're going from moon to star. And I think we're going by way of this Prince of Cups. Now, the Prince of Cups is trying to kind of equalize the internal and the external trying to find a way to have the external world match what we're feeling inside. Now, we're getting past this moon energy. We're, we're learning when it's creeping in. We're learning to transform that energy into a positive, right? And that is the way forward. And I think that what that's going to lead us to, well, it's going to lead us to the path of the serpent and to this five, of wands, this fiery five of wands. Okay, this is going to be your general energy going into the future. Okay, um, and this is a real competitive edge. This is a continuation of this horizontal plane that we've been on, right? With the six of discs, then we were in this two and three of wands, this really concentrated, really, really strong, powerful, majestic fire energy, right? We're going through the veil of water with this. 
with our minds. We're taking our rational mind with us. We're going through this veil of water. And on the other side, real competitive edge. Okay, This is the fire energy that you've been missing. right? This is the natural extension of this 2 and 3. Well, 2 plus 3 anyway equals 5, right? But I think that we've been cut off from this. We haven't activated this five of wands yet because we've been kind of stuck in this, this lunar water, this moon energy. But now we're getting through that and going through this veil of water with the Prince of Cups. Now the Prince of Cups could be another person involved in this situation. It could be someone very close to you that you, um, that you can talk to, that you can express all of these things to in a very open and free-flowing way. They're not going to judge you. They're not going to, uh, you know, uh, punish you for it, right? So it's someone that you can kind of bounce all these ideas off of. And that could be the catalyst for you moving through this veil of water that we're talking about. And on the other side of that is the real competitive edge. Your, your fiery nature, the two and three, the two and three, which are very powerful, very majestic, perhaps still a little bit potential. This is kinetic. This is the energy that's going to connect with uh, the outside world, the external environment. Okay. So the two and three, yes, you're a very majestic person, very upright, very um, strong of character, strong integrity. But what we're lacking is the reach right? What we're lacking is this extension of the five away from us, right? Because the, the two and three, they're in here. The five is out here where you can grab stuff, where you can manipulate stuff. And I don't mean in a bad way, manipulation. I mean, take stuff and mold it and move it and change it. So it could be that there is this lack of com competition. There's this lack of, um, connecting with the external world, right? I'm trying to find a better way to explain this. But it's this fire energy that needs to be extended out. And we need to reach and grasp for what we want. It's almost like this is too passive. It's almost as if this two and this three are too, too patient, too, too waiting for things. The five goes out and takes it, right? Uh, and this is more, this is an activity. This is, this is action in the external world. The two and three, again, are just kind of, they're, they're almost too spiritual. They're almost too internal, too abstract, too theoretical. This is a very practical, what do you need to do on the physical plane to get what you want, right? To get what you have earned, to, uh, make these people notice you. It's not you're just kind of sitting there looking very stoic and very majestic, you know, waiting for someone to come by and give you the rewards for this work that you've done. But no, you're putting yourself right there in front of them and, and um, having a little bit of pride in your work, you know, and being comfortable enough to express that. And not in a mean or aggressive or, you know, arrogant kind of way still with this majesty and this power. But now you are extending, you're putting yourself out there rather than waiting for someone to walk by and notice. Do you know what I mean? I hope that's resonating with you. Uh, if this reading is resonating with you, please hit the like button, consider subscribing. Leave me a comment too, I love hearing from all of you. So this is the general energy that, again, I think is the natural extension of the two plus the three. And now in the environment, we've got this three of discs. This is you taking maybe the theoretical three, the potential. This is your character, your majesty, your integrity, your commitment, your keeping to your promises. And this is you doing that work out in the world and kind of uh, doing it in such a way that if people aren't noticing, you're going to have to do it louder. You're going to have to do it bigger. Do you know what I mean? There's going to be no way for anyone to walk by and not notice this. You're putting it right there in front of people. Okay. So this is really, this is the manifestation of that three. 
of wands, right? We have the abstract, we have the concrete. We have the internal now, we're manifesting that externally. Okay. And honestly, I think maybe this six of pentacles that we're talking about, I think this was the project that you've completed. Maybe this is something that's still being worked on. Now that we think about it, now that we have the three and the three, right, three plus six, maybe that is this six of pentacles back here. Maybe this is something that we have to kind of, you know, maybe this time is not linear when we're talking about the tarot. Maybe this is something that you still must complete. Okay. And maybe now that we have the two plus the three, we have this five. With that five, now we can add the three plus the three and get this six going. That six might be this really um, just amazing thing that people cannot help but notice. That is right there, um, you know, living large that people cannot ignore. Okay, that is the accomplishment that's going to... Um, put you at the forefront that's going to that's going to um, I was gonna say force everybody to see you but I, I just think they're they're not going to be able to resist you know uh, but let's go to the next card uh, the next card is your fears worries and concerns this is an earth card the knight of pentacles why is this a fear and a concern well this could be a boss a supervisor manager it could be a co-worker somebody who you're, you want, this is the person that you want to put yourself right in front of and say, look at what I, I can do. And maybe you're worried that they're just really too kind of dull and dense to even realize what's going on. You know, this is someone here who wants things to be successful, wants there to be routine and rhythm, wants the same thing every day. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? If it's working now, there's no need to innovate. There's no need to try to do anything better. It's working now. Everybody just be quiet and let's just do it as, you know, as efficiently as possible. There, there's no need to innovate. There's no need to push the envelope or to try to do, do new things. This is a person without vision, right? This is the person who um, is not going to see this wonderful majesty and character, this wonderful you, even if it's right in front of them. Okay. This is your fear and worry. I'm not saying this is reality, but this is what you're worried about. Maybe it doesn't matter what you do. This person not going to see it anyway. That's, that's a concern. That's a valid concern. I don't think that suspicion, right? Maybe that's coming from this lunar energy again. Maybe this is the lunar energy creeping back up. Either way, I don't think that suspicion should be enough to get you to just say, ah, I'm not going to bother. What's the point, right? That's lunar. That's the moon card talking there. The next card, this is what I've been waiting for, the star card. The star card. This is a real, uh, I think this is a real shining moment. This is a real breakthrough. Um, because we have the, the moon energy that we've been so focused on, our unconscious kind of suspicions, and we're waiting for this sunlight to kind of break through and uh, illumine this world for us. But we've been very very focused on the waxing and waning of this moon energy, right? It's like some days you're very optimistic, other days it's just like the world is against me. You know, we've been very much caught up in that. I think what we're doing with this sun that's rising, this sun that, that is rising, is you going through the veil, is you taking, taking this three of wands through this veil of water right here to this five of wands. And now the five of wands is reaching, right? Grasping. And what you're grasping at is your highest ideal, your highest accomplishment, um, that distant star that's way out there, that what you always kind of dreamed you wanted to accomplish, your very 
they seem like very distant goals, right? You may look at the stars and just say, one day, one day I'm going to reach one of them. Well, now I think through all of this energy, it's like your, your arm is stretching. It's getting longer and longer. And you're able to pluck one of those stars out of the night sky. Okay. And this is the sublimation. This is taking the, the moon energy and pff, nah, I don't need the moon energy. I don't even want the sun energy. I want what's way, way, way out there. Shoot for the stars, right? You're not going to settle for hitting the moon. You're not going to settle for even hitting the sun. You want the star, right? Hey, we've all heard that, right? Shoot for the moon, you, or shoot for the stars, you hit the moon. That's still pretty good. I don't, I don't know if, that ha if that's how it goes, but I don't really like that. I think if you're shooting for the moon and you hit the stars, that, that I like. Exceed your expectations, right? Accomplish more than what you thought you were capable of, right? Always work to, to, to beat your own records, right? I think that's your energy. I think that's the two and three. What we've been missing again is that five. But now we have the five, and that again is the long arm, the long reach, and the grasping. Okay? And I think you, you literally are going to pluck one of these stars right out of the night sky. And this is a, this is an experience that I think is going to be unlike anything you've, you've ever experienced before. That is going to be a religious experience, right? This realization that you can accomplish what you feel in your heart with the two and three of wands, what you feel you can accomplish, what you feel this stuff that you're made of. Reaching this star is you getting confirmation about what you're made of. You are made of this force and fire, this starlight, stardust, right? It's something that we know in theory. It's something that we can base our lives on and we can try to live up to that. But to have the concrete realization that it is indeed a manifested truth, that's something way beyond, way beyond. So, mystery card. Uh, how are we doing on time? I feel like this has been going on for a while here. Um, we're going to do this mystery card. Yeah, we're getting pretty long in the tooth here. Uh, mystery card. I think with this fire energy, I think what this is going to do is going to come <clears throat> full circle. Two and three of wands to the five of wands, right? You've got the character, you've got the integrity, you've got the wisdom and the understanding. You've got the compassion. We've gone through the veil of water. You've got the compassion. You've got the experience, right? With that moon energy. So what does all of this stuff together create? What type of person does it create? I think it creates an emperor. Not gender specific, but I think the emperor is someone who has the two and the three of wands, informed by the two of swords, uh, going through the veil of waters, able to understand emotional reality, emotional energy and impulses, has conquered their fears, their demons, right? And now is able to execute and is able to reach and grasp their destiny. I think emperor energy. Let's see. Yes, indeed. Emperor energy. You really have an amazing week ahead of you. I'm, I'm sure of it now. Um, this, is, this is tremendous. I think this is the perfect confirmation. I think this card is going to go right there in the center. And this is you now utilizing all of these other cards. There are no negative cards in the tarot, right? If anyone says, oh, that's a bad card, no. They don't understand tarot. There are no bad cards. Every card is a spectrum. Every card is kind of a coin, you know? There's two sides to it. But I think now you are utilizing the positive aspects of all of these cards. And you are in perfect control of your self, of your life, of your destiny, of your reality. And this makes me very excited. I'm also very excited for the extended, which we're going to do if you want to click on that link. You can watch the extended for all of these readings. This was your weekly for April 23rd through 29th on Dove and Serpent Tarot.